never a dull fight for Tapia, constant motion and energy. The thing about Tapia is he truly loves to fight. This is his life right here, right inside that ring. He wants to fight, he loves it, loves he, it. He's dedicating this fight to his wife, Teresa. He says, I can't lose, he's gonna have to kill me to win. He really has a flair for the oh, let's hope not. He's got mama on his trunk, so he's got everybody uh, in the act. Nice right hand and left, double left hook to the bottom. Conadu told us the key to neutralizing Tapia is speed, although Conadu does have power. Conadu has some decent speed, but it's not like Johnny's. Johnny's got a little more speed, and he came in actually a little heavier than the bigger champion. Conadu has is relentless, and he has pop in both hands. Tapia I found the best strategy in forecasting him. Last week, he told us he's going to fight on the inside. And uh, yesterday, he said he's going to try to be slick. Try not to get hit, be sharp. Even you though he's taller, even though he's taller, I think Conadu might be a little too strong on the inside for Johnny. Johnny's fighting smart. Side, side to side, lateral movement, quick getting out. Conadu has to back Johnny up, but he's got to punch. He's got to work his way behind a good jab and be a, he's got to be active and effective. Is this up there emotionally with the Danny Romero fight? We asked him. He said, every fight is big, but this is my toughest. He'd be glad to get this first round over with. You can see he's very tight. He's, he's still not, not, not loose. He's still not Johnny Tapia yet. He's, he's, saying, it easy. he's yeah. trying to be the Tapia that, John, that Freddie Roach wants him to be, and he may be a little, little confused right now. But Conor is not throwing a lot of punches. He keeps coming for it. He's not doing an awful lot of work. And they always say that good big man will beat the good small man moving up, but Johnny Tapia is not an ordinary good small man. And, and he's putting punches in. I mean, you know, he lands to the body, he lands to the head, not big punches, but they're landing. The other guy's just looking. I mean, sort of a replay of what we saw last time when Lopez had the advantage but couldn't get off as fast as the other guy, as Page. We've learned in watching Tapia, everything with him is a war. He does love to draw. Oh, stinging left hooks to the body by Tapia. See, those kind of things win round for I mean, those are big, those are impressive. The other guy, in the meantime, is just crawling forward and, like, just waiting for his opening, to, and, which may never come this round. Tapia. Conadu seems to be trying to find his time to see if he cannot gauge Tapia yet. No, he, he is truly honey. <laughs> he is truly trying to say, where, where is this guy coming from? And, of course, it's hard to predict. Tapia comes from all over. Tapia, who's best Break. when he does use the angles and shoulder feints and things like that. But he has a puncher's mentality, but he doesn't have a big punch. End of round one. He did all right that time. He took that, that round as far as I'm concerned. But who is that, who is that thing? Ashanti. Mind you. We'd like to uh, bring in our translator for uh, Mr. Conor, Michael Amoko. I'm putting some cramps in your, in your face. I want you to lift up your hands, keep your hands there. You can fight. Don't be afraid of him. No, 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 no. No, it's not a cat. It's not a cat. It's not a cat. It's not a cat. No. My face, my face. Baba Somalia talking to Nana Kanadu. Okay. He's apparently a little bit of concern about a nick, but he said it's not a cut. Don't worry about it. Kanadu told us his idol, marvelous Marvin Hagley. You noticed on the uh, back of the. Uh, the uh, shirts there, marvelous, not a kind of dude. Yeah, I noticed something on the back of uh, Tapia. He's got a new tattoo. This one says Tapia on it in four-inch letters. You, you can hardly see it because it's coming over his trunks. He says he put it on for this fight so they can know who he was coming and going. A walking advertisement for himself. Also, short circuits any criminal activity you may be thinking about when you got your name on your back. You know, I noticed that Johnny Tappy, when he came out, had a little bit of water dripping off him, and as we get into that area, we'll see how that affects the right. footing again. We well, saw the problems in the last fight. For some reason, uh, Don King and uh, our boss, Jay Larkin, decided to put Pepsi Cola on there. I'm, I'm gonna say in 40 years, I've never seen Pepsi put on there. Well, that syrup may, uh, may, may be sticky, bit, maybe yeah. may uh, create, I mean, I've seen beer poured in there, but that's in drunken bros. <laughs> 
Tapia does appear to be fighting a smarter fight, less emotional, doing what he has to, even though it's a little bit of a, sometimes a downer, I think, where he likes to really get to the action. So kind of dude just can't gauge his speed. He, I can see him looking, but he just can't react to the speed. And, and you see the way, he was, the way he punches has got him confused. He punches and walks away. Then he walks away, and then when he comes back, I mean, this guy's just set to punch, and he's gone. Tapia's gone. Tapia's fighting very smart. So much experience in the ring here. Five world championships between them. Conadu, uh, whose best weapons are intelligence and savvy, a beautiful left hook and right uppercut. 31 of his 39 wins by knockout. 21 in three rounds or less. Defensively, you can see, always has his hands up. Yeah, he throws what I call Hollywood punches. They're from far enough outside, and with enough zing, it looks like the screen rope throws, you know. Okay, you throw the left hand from out here and land. He, he lands so cleanly and so clearly from outside. You hardly ever see that in a fight. Especially when he zings to the body. Boy, those things are pretty. Conadu has never been down. Tapia down once, his second pro fight against a guy named James Dean. But he came back to win that fight. Is that where he went? Yes. <laughs> Neither fighter intimidated. As, as he bops around, giving him different angles and moving all over the place. Next to me, Freddie Rooks is saying, attaboy, very quietly. Freddie's a very quiet man. Even if Conor doesn't land, to himself. even if Conor doesn't land for it, he's got to throw more. He's got to, he's got to make an effort to do something. He's exactly what Lopez was doing last time, letting to land thunderous bombs, and the other guy's landing punches. He'll build himself a lead if he doesn't watch out. Yeah, but you know, at least Page kept him off with some wicked stuff. Johnny's not laying any big bombs in. He's being smart. Yeah, but he's here to do. Tapia landing at the bell. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, nice deep breath. One more. Okay. That's very good work out there, Johnny. Take a win. Let's send it over to Jim Gray, Jim. Okay. All right, Steve. In between the fights, they treated the ring. The problem in the ring is the actually the paint job on the Budweiser sign. Usually it's after it's painted, it's sanded and it's rough to coincide with the guy's shoes. However, it was not sanded, it was not rough. So the decision was made by the promoters and by the people here in New Jersey that this fight could not go on until it was properly treated. And Jay Larkin, our executive producer, came up with the answer. He went out there and poured a bottle of Coca-Cola all over that, so it's a little bit sticky now. So Jay showing he can do a little bit more than produce this telecast, Steve. Jay showing his versatility. Very good. Thank you, Jim. And Jim giving equal time to Coca-Cola. I thought it was Pepsi. Now they're both satisfied. They're both happy. Good work, Jim Gray. Well, somebody had a better idea. They don't have commercials on Showtime, do they? They do now. I don't remember what they were, but they just did. <laughs> put his hand up, glove over the left eye. I think the one over the right eye is an actual punch. Boy, but in, in a split second, you saw the reaction of the old Tapia. He came back fighting, boy. I mean, he came back winging. See, Johnny Tapia has this type of boxing bill. He always has, and he's displayed it throughout his career. But again, that emotion takes over sometimes, and he's just got to run. Right, but this does nothing to Tapia's psyche. He says, if I don't get cut or get a black eye, it's not a fight. I, no, he's used to, he's right. used to injury. He, he really, truly is. He's, he's a fighter that doesn't really care. Well, let's over to uh, Frank Cappuccino. Says, don't look at me, don't cool. look at me. And Cappuccino says, don't look at me. Well, at Tapia, nothing's easy. Always an adventure. But he's never lost in 46 fights. What he needs is for this to go past four rounds. Since he's already ahead. And he's boxing very nicely this time. I'll tell you what, he might not be winning this round yet. Conor came out strong no. in that first minute. I agree with you. And I think Tapia has to turn the tables a little bit. Hey, there's a minute 17 to go by. If a fight is stopped by an accidental headbutt before the end of the fourth round, it's a technical draw win. Round three. Oh, that was a nice 
nice body shot, Bobby. Did you see Beautiful how body work was. Nice right hand, left hook, then he ducked the right hand from Conadu. That was pretty. Boy, that shot to the body was so pretty. So pretty. And Tapia doing a splendid job of using the angles, just like Freddie Roach wants him to do. A throw a left hook, then step to his right, then throw a right. I mean, Bobby, that's the way you take the rounds. Takes a lot of energy, though, and I'll tell you what, it gets around seven or eight with a guy chasing you backing up. There's a lot more energy to move in that direction. Do all those pivoting, turning. Oh, what's that Beautiful double left wow. hook. What was downstairs, but Frank Cappuccino let it go. I'm sorry, that's old time. I love that, that kind of fight. That's old time. I love that. Now they tap out. Shot twisting good. by Johnny Tapia. Very effective punches. Oh, yeah. Tapia doing a little boxing lesson here. First three rounds. Well, this is textbook by Johnny Tapia. Oh. Ah. Love it. Love it. It was a fair blow. I felt it was a fair blow. I felt it was a fair blow. Fuck, you got me to hip up, man. It's all right. I'm Deep breath. Still doing good, Freddie? Still doing excellent, okay? Now, here, Johnny. All right. You followed the referee game very, very well. Done. Side to side movement. Referee said, right. said he but thought it was a ball. Now, let's, let's us take a look at it and see what we think. Because sometimes referee's right there. Mm, there it is. You see his head move when, when he got hit? Yeah, I'm sorry, but it was that's, on the right hand. That's a clean it's, headbutt. Bobby, Bobby, clean look. headbutt. Clean headbutt. You can see it right here, right there. It's, I mean, you know, yeah, that's just a clean head, but no, there's no two ways about unintentional. that. Unintentional. Unintentional, but clean. So right? all he needs is one more round right, to get now. to four. Unless he calls it Johnny, a clean punch, in which case they stop it on a cut. Right? And don't move back in a straight line. Off to the there's side. The off to the side. He's going hard shot, that's all. Here we go. After the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. If it's stopped on an accidental uh, headbutt, round four, scheduled for 12. WBA Bantamweight Championship. Nana Kana doing the white with the blue trim is your champion. Tapia moving up from 115 to 118 for the first time in a title fight. Let's check the online. Conadu seems to be picking up the pace a little bit. Even, even when he's not punching, he's stepping to Johnny a little more quickly, and now he's unloading a little more. He better start thinking about something. <laughs> Whoa. And as promised, there it is. Tappy up, three zip. That's all I got. I have the same one. It has been a shutout for the man with all the tattoos, Johnny Tapia. He is weighted number eight pound for pound on the January issue of KO Magazine, ahead of some good fighters, Shane Mosley and Ricardo Lopez. He's got many religious and spiritual tattoos sprinkled around the body, the Madonna on his chest, another one has his mother looking over his shoulder. He's a museum. Museum of tattoos. Well, he says he feels most at peace in the ring. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, fellas, I enjoyed my career, too. I, I can't say that's the most at peace I've ever felt. Well, certainly two different psyches. <laughs> he says and Johnny Tepper. <laughs> I certainly expected Conor to do a lot better than this. I mean, he is not Beautiful right hand to the body. Yeah, I'm disappointed. He's not catching up. No offense here by Conor at all. After the breakneck speed of that last fight, where they were going back and forth and back and forth, this looks like a, a one-way shutout. You know, I mean, shutout in rounds. Not that he's beating him up. But it's going to be very scored. difficult for Johnny Tappy to keep this kind of effectiveness and this pace as he gets round 7, 8, 9, and 10. I've watched tapes of uh, Conor do 13-year Wiley veteran. He's a punishing, accumulating fighter. Makes opponents pay with good combinations, but he has been laying back here. Seems to be uh, either he's waiting for something or he's just fearful of opening up against Tappy. Tappy almost got himself in the corner over there just a moment ago. He just kept bouncing back and forth and went right by him. I mean, he didn't throw a punch to try to keep him there. What we've got to see is what happens when Tapia really gets hit one of those hard-handed shots with this guy. That's what we've got to see. 
Get that dried up good. Tapia racing out to the center of the ring, touching gloves with Connor Doe. Here we go into round six. It's been all Tapia, a shutout. I just asked his wife, who's his trainer as well as uh, manager, really. I said, do you think he can keep this up for 12 rounds? He says, he's not even warmed up yet. He's going, we've had him going 19 rounds in the gym. And 19 rounds in the gym is an awful lot of gym work. Well, I'll tell you, I, I tried that a couple times myself back when we still 15 round title fights. I had the light heavyweight title, boxing 12 and 13 rounds a couple of days in a row. That takes its toll on you. And he's in great shape. You gotta remember too, be mindful, he sat out three and a half years in the early 90s for unfortunate reason for drug abuse. But it's something that, that comes back to possibly be to an advantage today. Those are three and a half years of inactivity. Well, we'll see when Tyson comes back. He's had three years right. off. Well, yeah, 18 months, right? Here. It's it is well and he had three years, right? And then 18 months. Yep. Stay out of the So we'll corner. see. Uh, right now, this guy looks like he's got the formula to do this for 12 rounds, and right now, kind of do looks like he hasn't got a clue as to how to stop it. Which is a surprise to me because he's got the experience and he knows better than that. I would have expected if Con with Kondu saying how good his chin was and that he had no problems in that area, that he, that he doesn't throw a little more caution to the wind, press the fight, and just cause a brawl. Yeah, hope that hope that your punch can and can have an effect because you know Tapia's punch is not going to hurt him. Or he thinks he's not going to with Johnny Tapia. And Tapia, uh, in essence, doing his job, doing it very technically, but Conadu uh, just not responding in any way. And he's doing what he has to do to win, and he's doing it handily. Why should he get in a punch out with a guy that punches as hard? Why should he? Why shouldn't he do just this for 12 rounds? It's not in his character to do it, but it's a lot easier than taking those big beatings. Conadu can't cut him off. He can't square up and get a, an unloaded combination. He gets off one or two, and Johnny's already given him a new angle, stepped off one way or the other. Conadu is not taking any chances. Here we are in the sixth round with 20 seconds left, and I don't believe Conadu has thrown one effective punch the whole time. I was just going to say, I don't think he's landed one hard punch. I mean, landed hard punches. He's thrown a few, but they didn't land. Tapia continues to uh, cut off the ring, use angles, a lot of head movement, a lot of speed, doubling up with the jab and the left hook, bouncing around. Bell, bell. And then sticks out his tongue. Okay, you're on. Beginning to look like Willie Pep. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Go. Go. Take a deep breath. Clean the nose. Clean the nose. Leave water, water for the gunachi. For the gunachi. For ice and the gunachi. Yeah, that's what we do. Well, 1999 kicks off with Mike Tyson on pay-per-view. Saturday, January 16th, Showtime Event Television presents the return of Mr. Tyson, the former undisputed heavyweight champ of the world, most controversial fighter in boxing, entering the ring for the first time in 18 months to face former IBF heavyweight champ Franz Botha. The return of Mike Tyson on pay-per-view Saturday, January 16th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, live from the MGM Grand Garden, Arena in Las Vegas. Tappy has obviously not lost any speed in moving up in weight for the first time in a championship fight. He told us his walking around weight is 131-132. How about scores of unofficially at the halfway point? Well, in this tedium, I have it 60 to 54, which means that Johnny Tappy has taken every round on my card. I have to agree. Conadu's just not doing enough to win the round. He's not even trying hard enough to win the round. And everybody at home seems to agree with us. Well, I, I give credit to, uh, to our executive producer for putting Pepsi Cola on the on Budweiser. They haven't slipped since then. If they were slipping, sliding, maybe Conadu could have hit him. Are you bucking for a raise? Yeah, well, Coca-Cola, they can pay me off in Coca-Cola. You, you gotta get it even, 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 even that out. Say that again, Bobby? You gotta get it straight. One time was Coke, one time was Coke. Hey, hey, listen, I don't want anybody arresting me when I leave here. 
Round seven, about a minute gone by. It has been all Johnny Tapia, the pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tapia has even hinted at uh, wanting the Prince, Nassim Ahmed, but he's got to move up to 126 for that one. He's at 118 right now. Hey, we saw what happened with his, his old buddy Romero, recently moved up two weight classes and lost to Vianney Bungu. Well, let me tell you, by the way, Chuck, I can go to the bank and cash in a couple of CDs to see Tapia get in with the Prince. That would be some kind of brawl. How about the ring walks? Well, well forget the ring walks. It would be a brawl. I think right off the top of my head, the Prince might hit just a little too hard, but Johnny Speed might neutralize that. Be a good fight. I'd like to forget the ring walks. Thank you. Yeah. I think they should do something about that. Just make it shorter. They are absurd. Oh, nice. 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 For counter jab. It was a shot Strong. For counter. Strong jab by Tappy. Uh, uppercut. The, and, and then he but his head. Not a missing. Look at the speed. The, the defense. The movement of Tapia eluding those punches. Conadu can't come close. He is so frustrated. See the type of pace and the type of fight that Conadu's fight. He's got to have a ton of energy left. Use some of it and just let all hell break loose. He's got nothing to lose. Well, when we spoke to Tapia yesterday, Johnny said to us, there is no if. He said, undoubtedly, he will win this fight. And uh, he's brought that strategy in. It succeeded. Well, Tapia's got an awful lot of confidence. He's had that since the first time I met him as a young kid. I mean, he's just always manifested this personality where he just didn't think he can lose. 44-0-2 with 24 knockouts, 13-0-1, six knockouts in world title fights. Held the WBO title since 1994, IBF champion. Stripped of the WBO for not fighting the mandatory, but still the IBF junior mandatory. Okay, all right, all right. A little hot dog in by Johnny. Very good. Very good. Good job. 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 He's telling him to hit the body. He's telling him that the time he's supposed to go to the body, he's telling No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. You don't have any problem. Tell them, show them that you are the king. You are the king. You are the king. You are holding the title. Don't be frustrated. Let's go. Keep going, keep punching. Mommy, my face. Give him some, a little water to drink. Whenever he's waiting, don't look, don't wait too. Keep on hitting him. You know, it's too calm in that corner. They gotta get something going there. They need some energy. And it's too calm in the show auditorium. <laughs> I hope something's going on in the boardwalk that's exciting, because this isn't exciting. They gotta wake this guy up. Tapia not known as being a controlled fighter, although he really controlled his emotions beautifully in that win over uh, Danny Romero uh, back in 97. But uh, uh, that, that's, he's exactly doing that here. He's controlling the pace of the fight, showing great lateral movement. Well, that may be called maturity. He, he's mature. He's, he's a little bit more intelligent. He doesn't have to have all that... Well, is Conadu doing what he needs to do to win? Obviously not. Bobby Chez's keys to victories included force Tapia backward. That's a no. Good body punching. That's a no. Power shots inside. Another no. 0 for 3. Well, this round's the first round where he landed a couple of body shots. Just then, as you were saying that, he landed a couple of body shots. Finally, he, he, did, he got into a little bit of a mix-up where he got close enough to punch. And, and Tapia didn't leave. And, and punch back, but that was ta because Tapia chose to stay. Even when Tapia comes and goes to the body and stays there with a double or triple combination, kind of do waits to try and block everyone, and then Johnny disappears. He doesn't unload while Johnny's still within reach. Well, I think he's he's unwilling to do what you suggested, and I think is a key. He's got to go toe-to-toe. To -toe. He's got to try to get this guy in exchange. If he keeps waiting to block all the shots and then not punch, then that's what it's going to be all night long. Uh, Tapia opens up. Combination to the head. Some of those were blocked by the elbows of Conadu, but some of them got in. Some of them were blocked by his cheekbones. Yes. Too. That was a left cheekbone to the left. <laughs> 
We're in the eighth round, and I don't remember one good, solid hammering shot that uh, Johnny uh, has taken, Tapia has taken. No, there really hasn't been. There's one or two decent left hooks on the inside to tap his body, but nothing serious. Yeah, I've seen a good body shot. One good body shot I saw, really a good body shot. Well, when you when you have a fighter over here from Africa, it triggers thoughts of Azuma Nelson, Dick Tiger, Cornelius, Boza, Edwards, great fighters out of Africa, but not a Conadu who, who is um, revered over there, uh, having his difficulty uh, tonight. They're watching this on television in the middle of the night because of the time difference in Ghana, but I'm sure they're, they're putting people to sleep. I was going to say, uh oh It's a nice left hook, and Johnny doing what he does, smile at the crowd, turn his head don't and walk play away. The game, Johnny. Well, he don't acted play the a game. bit. Okay. He's, he's acting, and he doesn't need to do And that. he just yelled out to Frank Cappuccino, I'm okay. But that was the first good punch he landed. Finally. Not enough to win around, but it's at the start. Well, right now, it's not about winning rounds. Now it's about a knockout. Well, Connor is trying to come on, but Tapia has some answers. Connor did not like the fact that Tapia just rubbed him on the top of the head. Inside the ropes with Bobby Chez. One of the keys to mention is Johnny Tapia not being there. When Connor comes in here, he throws a nice combination. Hey, well, he's just stepping off side to side movement. He's staying away from Connor's power. Throws his combinations, steps off, spins off, and he's not there. He's just, you're just not going to hit him. You're going to take three or four punches, and then he's gone. You're not going to catch him. Make a mental counter and get out of there, okay? Okay. Hi, Johnny. I can yes. take a shot, huh? <laughs> yes, you can, son. Yes, you can, buddy. Yeah. We don't want to take Let's keep that a secret, okay? Between me and you, all right? I'm okay. I don't want this guy touching you. All right? Okay, I know what you're doing. He's still very dangerous out there, all right? Get back on side to side movement, and you face and you jab, okay? Get the exchanges and get the hell out of here. I gotta here. get that body, bitch. Attaboy. Right, but that is great stuff from side. Freddie Roach. <laughs> so Go. cautious, too, because he <laughs> realizes that Connor Dew is still dangerous. One punch. Here's all what Freddie knows. Freddie knows. Listen, you got this fight in the bag. You don't need to do anything but what you've been doing. That's all you need to do. Just stay away. Don't get hit. And, it, you know, it's hard to keep down an emotional and charismatic fighter uh, uh, like Johnny Tapp because he likes to please the crowd. He wants to hear the noise. He wants to hear that, you know. Um, he's like Vinny Pazienza in the Pazienza. He, he wanted to go out there and throw people. Even if he was getting hammered. He just wanted excitement. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell Tapp, hey, don't excite the people. Just keep on going. We're the fight. Not, not satisfactory to him. He, he likes to see action. Right now he's coming forward a little bit and still being effective. Tapia finding the openings. And those punches being blocked by the right arm and elbow. You see, he's so quick that it's very difficult for Conadu to even adjust. When the combination starts, he almost doesn't try and counter because as soon as he moves his hands to counter, there's another one right behind it, and he's hit clean. And Conadu, who told us speed is the key to neutralizing Tapia, is telegraphing. He had, he had no idea how right he was, uh, <laughs> that it was the key to winning the fight anyway. Just not from his side. Exactly. There's a pouring left jab. Uh -oh. Oh, he just slipped. Yeah, no, but on what? And there's nothing there. Just kind of uh, lost. There's no punch there. For a second. Like his knee buckle on him. Oh, oh, beautiful. What a jab. Oh, a jab. Right in the kisser. You kind of put, you feel it all the way down to your heels. You go down into your heels with that. Canada does have a good chin. See, so you notice there, that was very, very telling. All Tapia did was make a body faint forward. Kind of do stop this track, pick his hands up and duck as if here come the punch. Not reacting to it by being offensive, but purely defensive. This is an exquisite exhibition of boxing by the veteran Johnny Tapia. 31 years old. Out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Such a smart fighter, knows how to neutralize his opponent's strengths. Look at that. Look at that. It's a, it's a worry pep. <laughs> It, it, it reminds me of the time Willie Pep came into the garden and said, I, can, I, can, I won't throw a punch, and this guy won't hit me a punch, and I'll win the round. And he that's did. what he did. <laughs> it looks like he could do that here. Combination by Tapia, the straight right hand. Long oh, right nice. on the chin. There's a right uppercut by Tapia right on the chin of Conadu. Nice uppercut. There's another good right hand. Another good right hand by Tapia. See him slip the punches, do him what he wants. A clinic by Johnny Tapia here, a boxing clinic. You can hear the Tapia entourage. 
chanting. You know, sometimes, too, when you move up in weight divisions and have to fight with guys who are normally bigger, stronger, face stronger men, you have to change your style a bit, do some adjustment. That was a trip after the punch. He oh, got tangled up glove. with the glove. feet of uh, Kennedy. He's all right. Smiles over to everybody. <laughs> Dry his head off, man. It's all the water getting in the center of the ring. Listen. Here, Frank Cappuccino saying, dry his head off in the tapia corner. Yes, keep on doing it, okay? All right, you fight this fight for you, okay? You got the crowd, okay? Hey, Johnny, you focus on. Remember when we worked in the gym, we said we can't walk through the jab. Yes, sir. Right. We keep meeting with that jab and get out off to the side, okay? okay then a one two off to the side, okay? But don't stay in there too long, because well, the guy's dead. You know your time, time, your nine times dead. We're going nine, 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 nine. nine, nine. <laughs> It's a one-way fight. It's real easy to score. 10-9, 10-9 across the board. The shutout continues. It's a no-hitter. What I was talking about before, Johnny Tappy moving up in weight, not maybe feeling he's got the strength to fight with this guy on the inside. Similar thing happened to me in my career when I moved up to cruiserweight. I couldn't out fight Robert Dane. I had a box from the outside. So this time, Johnny's doing exactly what he has to. I will check uh, how the fans have it at home in the online. Gee, there's a surprise. Yeah. Just what we all have it, 90 to 81. There's another vicious straight left by, by Tapia. Punches are landing effectively. Well, defeat so apparent here that even the drummers that they brought uh, that have been banging those tribal drums quit. I mean, they even quit. The Ashanti Warriors, uh, nothing to uh, cheer about. No one said, well, that's it. Drums aren't going to help. You know, you're well past the point of no return with points. You're down nine points. It's going to be really nothing short of impossible to get them all back in three rounds, even with the knockdown in every round. He's got to, he's got to let it hang out somewhere. This Why wait till the last round? Do well, it now. This is ring generalship and effective aggressiveness at its best being displayed by Johnny Tepp. Whoa. What a nice little combination. That was one punch, backed out, come back, another punch, ducked out. Nice. Nice. But quite frankly, we're, we're really surprised by this uh, uh, lackluster effort uh, by Nana Conadu, uh, taking nothing away from the countering left there, uh, by the way, by Conadu, but taking nothing away from Tapia, who's done a beautiful job. Wait, Tapia's done what he's supposed to do. He's Absolutely. won every round. Anytime you win every round, however you get there, that's quite an accomplishment of a boxing match. Hey, these rounds are not easy to get one after another. Now, that was not a knockdown. Not a knockdown. Right. Frank Cappuccino knockdown. waves it off. He wasn't even looking. He just heard that's the guy counting. That's why I wanted to stay yeah, with yeah. your head, from your head. Yeah, I've, I've, told, I've told him to stay off the beer. Well, evidently the Pepsi or the Coke doesn't really work. Well, don't say that. Don't say that. It's just one slip. It's only been one slip in the whole fight. Now, these guys are going to have to start wearing football cleats. No, they, they just have to sign down. They just can't put fresh paint at the afternoon of the fight and expect it to work. That may have been the best exchange of the fight, and Tapia ate a little leather there for the first or second time in the entire fight. Tapia does not need to go. <laughs> uh, that was good. Uh, consummate showman. Johnny Tapia. Consummate, consummate showman. Yeah, he, he saw himself coming closer to that logo and dashed out of there, bolted away. He didn't want to slip. Look at the footwork by Tapia here. Look at that. And this is the tenth round, guys. That's the side to side, that lateral movement we talked about. And this is the tenth round. He's got the legs. He's got a little Ali action going here. Uh, he has that. He has that. And there we get to 100. John, Johnny talking to Bobby Chez. Here you go. The least amount of water, please. He gives a character. Yes, sir. Johnny? He's going to come up wild now, Finn. I know. All right, let's take a look at the, at the slip. All right. Uh, now here. We're going to see Don't nothing new. Take, no, the paint is, is slick. As you step on it, you slip. Yeah, he was actually doing the punching. Yeah. Yeah, you see, his, his, foot, his left foot came actually underneath and got in front of him, and he just fell back. Johnny, listen, punish, listen to Johnny, keep smart. Now here, he's, he's palm with the jab, trying to land the right hand, okay? You know that, okay? All right, so when that jab comes, 
Rose continues to be very cautious. He realizes that Tapia is winning the fight handily. But he says, right, hey, the in, guy is pouring in. with the jab. He's looking for the right. If he finds that opening, he's going to unload it. The best thing about Freddie is he, because of the character and nature, he doesn't get wildly excited. He doesn't tell you to do 20 things. He's very specific. He says, keep the jab. You don't need to fight this. Just keep the jab. Keep moving. He centers on one thing and hammers it in, which is very good for, for a fighter. I mean, you don't want to hear a guy come in several voices, throw the right, throw the left, throw the, you don't hear anything. I mean, one guy tells you, throw your jab and keep moving. Don't stand still and fight. Beautiful straight right hand there by Tappy that snuck in. Right on the face of Conadu. When Conadu first came out, he threw a big left hook at Tappy, and I thought maybe, okay, his desperation is finally showing up. But once again, he settled into being a little too methodical and uh, certainly lackluster. Well, he couldn't possibly, in his wildest dreams, think he's close to this fight. He, he has to know he's winning. He's losing this thing just like from here to the boardwalk, he can't possibly think he's winning this one. He is being totally outclassed by Johnny Tapia. Nice left hook there by Tapia that pushed uh, the African back. You see Tapia looking down to make sure he's not by that the logo. Tap dancing around it, but well. That can't be a knockdown, was it? Can't be Are you correct? Oh my goodness! Seven. Are you crazy? Is that was in stunned uh, disbelief. Are you crazy? I'm sorry, John. That was a knockdown, brother. Oh, Come on, let's uh, go. Well, goodness. you know what? Well, that may be the only round he wins. I still don't give him the round. Well, it's you know it's a, it's academic, but by the same token, that's twice we've seen that. That's twice we've seen that. Yeah, we saw in the first fight, Tony Perez making don't, that don't, call. Don't now look here, at me, Johnny, don't look at me, man. You see Cappuccino yeah. telling Johnny, "Don't look at me," it's giving him the evil eye. Well, he, because he's you know, understandable. He's whipping the guy today. Well, this begins to open things up. Uh, kind of now, all of a sudden, right? it's because he's lost his head. Uh, there, there is nice right hand by John Tapia has lost his head and wants to show that that knockdown was nothing. And instead of just boxing nicely and losing the round, he wants to win the round. This is the one thing Freddie Rose look, look, look. cautioned against. Be careful, Johnny Tapia. That's our second phantom knockdown tonight. But you see, that, that's what he wants. He wants to neutralize, and, and that got him back into the fight. Now kind of dudes into the fight. Johnny's fighting, he's still fighting it smart, he's not straight out slugging, but he's doing a little more than I'm sure Freddie would like. Yeah, he, he lost his head there for a minute, he's got to calm down again. Trying to do obviously in the desperate need of a knockout to, to win. And he's got to go for it right here. Well, I still think Johnny won the round, guys. You know, I, I, I was going to say, how can you give that to anybody? But the best you can do is would give it an even round if you subscribe to the theory that if the referee counts, you've got to get, make it a 10-8, then it's an even round. Because, it's, hey, this, that, that wasn't even a knockdown. He ain't lost rest. Let, let, let's, let's look. I mean, this, can't, this is so hard to believe. What round is it? Huh? This last round? Well, I tell you what, we're watching. You don't see anything happening. I mean, uh, that, that, that fight, uh, the punch that was to the side certainly didn't do anything to, to tap you. Now, look at it again. Johnny and, and uh, kind of do kind of get together. He's a little off balance right there. Nothing. He just trips. I mean, well, he bends down like, and just trips on his ankle. It was like patting him on the back. And you can see him wiping his left foot. He just tripped. All right. Close your right eye. Close your eye. Another phantom knockdown. did was run his shot. I now wind up yeah, my real except on Bobby's card. I left it there. They touch gloves for round 12. They just got their their feet kind of tangled up there and the uh, um, off balance move and Tapia went down. No punch. Why do referees do those things? Overreaction. Not just an overreaction too. I they think that sometimes their, their viewpoint doesn't give them what we have. And they have other things on their mind as well. We're just looking at the fight, scoring it, and we have to we're watching every other little thing. And sometimes they miss. Well, Conadu finally, finally decides to come forth. Well, he obviously, as I said before, he's got to knock Tappy out to win this fight. It's a uh, 
He may have won that last round. That's the only round for Conadu. Well, I, I don't think I could have won it. He, he lost the whole round, but that knockdown could have given him an even round, but that's it. Sometimes I, with a 10-8, if it's a clean knockdown, it goes to a 10-9 or a 9-8, but it's only one point. The knockdown's just the only part of the round he won, which I basically thought was the only thing Conadu would have won. To this point, that is the only controversy in this fight. Tapia just all over with a furious barrage. Then he just steps back and looks to do it again. Uh, no, the punches weren't that hard. Conadu should just whip the couple up. You know, he was crouched cover. Just fire two or three big shots. Just swing a Hail Mary out there. Take a look and see what's happening. Uh, there's that Hail Mary that you just spoke of. There's another two. I should point out to the folks at home that when Bobby Chase describes things, he sometimes acts it out physically with his fist, so it's really dangerous here. <laughs> That's why I sit on the other side of him. Good move. Again, Tapia, patient as always, moving. Oh, wow. Sidestepping, beautiful. Yeah. Take out move by Tapia. I think he's fighting this one for the crowd. Under a minute remaining of the fight. Tapia on his uh, toes in tremendous condition. I, I believe this is probably the least punishment that he's taken in any fight in his life. <laughs> You're probably right. I mean, he probably goes home and his missus going to the hospital. You know, is, is, is there something I'm missing tonight? Well, he still probably needs one or two little stitches in that eye. Oh, his wife will do that. A little stitch doesn't hurt. Yeah, not with Tapia. Well, okay, now we go. If Conadu's got something in his mind, he better get unload it now because he's headed for a long trip back to Africa without his title. Look at this defense by Tapia. You know how many, he had three straight duck under moves to avoid right hooks by Conadu. And then he comes back. But he doesn't need to do this. The man has to get so far ahead, he doesn't need to do this. He has he's to. cut across it's the butt of his right foot. No, he got, he got an accident ahead, but I believe. That's it. But Johnny Tapia has to do that. He has to please the crowd. And he does a backflip to cap it off. That's it. Over. A near shutout throw for Johnny Tapia. That was a, probably the closest equivalent to a no-hitter or a perfect game. Yeah, I think so. In boxing. I think that was a no-hitter. It's amazing to see any blood on him at all since hardly anybody hit him. I actually threw one of those once against Bash Ali. Unanimous shutout. Wow. One time. Well, he won or you won? I did. Oh, okay, just ask him, Bobby. We're I, didn't hit somebody. Hit. I didn't say I was in the wrong end. Hit, hit him. I didn't think Bobby would bring that up if it was on the other end. But uh, you see the gash along the bridge of... Uh, yeah, I thought, I thought that happened in the far corner and they were in, uh, in close. I thought they banged their uh, heads or faces or what have you. But, you know, now he's got another badge of honor. He should probably be a little happier now. No, no. Here's one African fighter who didn't quite live up to the reputation of Dick Tiger. And uh, Boza Edwards and all those great fighters that come out of Africa. I tell you, the blood in uh, the right corner of Johnny's eye looks very dark. And it's closed. Well, he's got a marked up eight. He, Tapia uh, often looks like the loser, but he's yeah. never lost. It's, it's, like, it's like we did with Ricardo Lopez, where he looked like he ran in a train, but he won handily. Against Rosendo Alvarez three weeks ago. One of the great fights of the year. All right, let's look at the last part of this round where Tapia gets a little bit sassy and decides to uh, showboat for the crowd. I mean, you know, he, he, this guy has got to show something for the crowd. He can't just let it go like that. Hit, miss. That, that's the end of it. How Conadu could raise his arms in victory is beyond me. Here's the accidental head, but they just kind of come together and bang. They hit the head just right in the corner's eye. They just... Johnny's standing up a little too straight. Taller man put his head down, right into his eye. And with all those people standing there in the ring, not one person has slipped. That's unbelievable. Maybe King will slip. Amazing traction. Let's hope Jimmy Lennon Jr. doesn't slip as he gives the, uh, the decision. Let's... Let's go up to our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. I believe he's set. Can't really see him up there. A lot of people up in the ring. Jimmy's the one without the gloves. <laughs> Jimmy, there he goes. He makes his way over towards us, yeah. and he's set to go.
Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a majority decision. Here are the score totals. What? Judge at ringside, Franco Priani. We're not scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges, Uriel Aguilera scores about 116 to 111. And John Porteridge, who scores about 115 to 112 in favor of the winner and the new WBA Bantamweight Champion of the World, Johnny Trump. That is the stupidest judging I have ever seen. Listen, guys, listen, I know I took a lot of punches for a lot of years, but am I blind, too?